Hey guys, JJ here with Ron's Equipment Company, and uh, we're going to go over some of the different uh, control buttons and everything inside the JCB skid steers. So here we go. All right, so starting on the top left here, you've got your radio. Um, there is a little piece here that you can open, and there's a plug in there that you can plug, uh, you know, your aux cord into to go into your phone, so you can play your phone through the radio. Um, and now starting over here on, on these buttons on the top left of your machine, this uh, unlock and lock button here, that's going to be for your hydraulic quick detach on the tool carrier in that, uh, in that cylinder right there. There's a red plunger when you have the bucket tipped back towards you, you can see it a little better. Um, that plunger, when that plunger comes all the way up, that's when your bucket will be disconnected. Um, from the pins on the tool carrier so that way you can detach from it and uh, once again you know you're gonna push and hold this unlock button here and that plunger will pop up and then you can disconnect the bucket without getting out of the cab and then when you hook back up to it or hook to your pallet forks or whatever else you got then you'll push and hold the lock button here so you'll push and hold that the plunger will go all the way down and then you're reattached to whatever attachment you have on there all right, next, this button here on the top is gonna be your smooth ride button. Okay, and so what that's doing is basically putting, you know, your arm that has your bucket and pallet forks or whatever else you got on there attached, it's gonna put that arm into almost like an elevated float. Um, so it's not gonna be rigid. And so when you're going over bumps and stuff like that, it'll allow the arm to kind of take the brunt of the punishment and not so much on the operator. Below the smooth ride button, we will have the uh, reversing fan button right there. And that button is basically gonna be a manual override. Um, we do equip pretty much every skid steer that we order is gonna come with a reversing fan. And so that's gonna be for your radiator on the back of the machine. And it'll blow any uh, chafe or anything that you have in there. It'll blow out the top of the radiator to keep your radiator clean. Um, you know, if you just notice that a bunch of hay or something, you know, landed on there and you want to blow it out right now, you can basically hold that button and that'll do a manual override and blow it out at that moment. Um, next, this button here is going to be your high flow button. And so if you do have an attachment on your machine that requires high flow, um, that's, you're going to have to turn that on. And so the way that you do that... I'll start the machine here real quick. It might be hard to hear me for a second, but we'll make do. So the way that you are going to engage the high flow, um, you're gonna have to do a combination of buttons here. It's more simple than it sounds. Um, make sure that your parking brake is off. Okay. And then what you're gonna have to do is push this auxiliary lock button here. So we will push that. And hard to see, but that is lit up. And so now at this point, we can come over here and select our high flow. That light will turn on. We'll come back over here, turn that off. And now we are in high flow. So that's how you would turn on the high flow if you did have an attachment on there that requires high flow next to the high flow button we've got ISO controls or ISO controls and H pattern controls this is one of the only buttons on the machine to switch between those two control options you do have to have the machine turned off but you'll have the key lined up in the upright position matched up with this line here. That's basically gonna be your accessory position to where you have uh, electrical power to the machine, but the, ma the engine is not running. And so what you're gonna do is with it in that position, with the key in that position, you can switch to H mode and then you'll start the machine and now you're in H pattern controls. And so, you, you know, your difference between ISO and H pattern. In ISO, you know, you've got your two joysticks and so your left joystick in ISO pattern, your left joystick is gonna control your tracks or your wheels. And so it'll move the machine you know, forward and back 
and you'll also turn with the left joystick. And then on your right joystick in ISO controls, you know, pulling it back, it's gonna be all your loader controls. So pulling it back will raise your loader, your loader, you're pushing it forward is gonna lower the loader. Moving the stick to the outside or to the right side is gonna dump the bucket and moving it to the left will cur curl your bucket back. So that's how ISO works. And then H pattern is gonna be, you know, a little bit different. Basically, you're gonna use the two sticks together to control the machine forward and back and side to side, you know, almost like an old bulldozer or like your older skid steers. That's how they would run. You know, you push both sticks forward, you'll go straight forward. You know, if you pull one back, you'll turn to that side, pull the other one back, etc. Pull them both back, you'll go in reverse straight. And then moving the joysticks in and out on either side will control raising and lowering the loader and curling and dumping your bucket. So that's a nice feature. If you have somebody that's used to one style and then you have another operator used to the other one, you know, it's, it's easy to switch back and forth. You just do have to make sure that the key is in that accessory position where it's lined up with this line here. And then you can switch back and forth between ISO and H. All right, now going over to this side, you know, you've got your parking brake there. Um, anytime that you raise the lap bar, you know, this here, anytime that is up, then your parking brake is going to automatically come on. When you start the machine or shut off the machine, it's automatically gonna have the parking brake on. Um, your joysticks will not work. You will have no feedback to your joysticks when the parking brake is on. Next to that, you know, with this one, two, three next to it, these are gonna be your work lights. So if you push it once, it will turn on the front work lights. If you push it twice, it'll turn on the front and the rear. And if you push it three times, it'll turn off, okay? Next to that, the four, five, six here, that's gonna to be to lock out your loader. And so basically, you know, especially in, in ISO pattern, um, when you push that button, it's gonna kill your right joystick. So that if you are traveling, you know, with a load or something like that, and you're afraid you're gonna bump it, and you don't want to drop whatever you've got on there, you know, whatever reason you would have for locking that out while traveling with a load on there. Down to the bottom left here, this is going to be uh, what JCB calls parallel lift. It's basically your self-leveling loader. And so on the majority of your machines, it's only going to self-level on the way up. It won't self-level on the way down, the exception being the uh, 3TS. So if you do have a teleskid, um, it'll, it'll self-level on the way down in addition to on the way up. Um, and then finally here with the zero, that's going to be your auxiliary lockout. And so what that's going to do is, you know, if you had your uh, mulcher or something like that, mulcher, snowblower, broom, something like that, um, hooked up to the front of the machine, you know, and you want to travel with the machine and you want to make sure that, you know, something doesn't get bumped and that that attachment doesn't turn on you will engage this button here and that will kill the auxiliary hydraulics so that it will not turn on and as you saw before when you switch from standard flow to high flow you will also use that auxiliary hydraulic lockout all right up here you've got a hand throttle you know um, pretty standard obviously lower rpms are going to be the turtle higher rpms are going to be the rabbit um, one thing that we do sometimes get some calls on is you know let's say you're out operating the machine you know and you had it at half throttle you know or something like that whatever the case may be you know and then you turn the machine off you leave the machine you come back later you want to run it again you start it up and it's still sitting at half throttle jcb has an override built in here sorry about that to where when you turn the machine on, it's automatically going to be running at idle, at low RPM. Even if this is turned halfway, it's going to be at low idle. They don't want the machine to turn on and just have the RPMs rev all the way up or anything like that when you first turn it on. And so you may notice, you know, that if you did leave this in this position and turned it off and turned it back on, you know, if and you're trying to get moving and do your work or whatever, you know, you turn this or you're even using the the foot throttle down here, you know, you're giving it gas, nothing's happening. And why that is, is JCB, like I said, they have an override in there to when you first turn the machine on, 
it takes your RPMs all the way down to an idle no matter where this control is set. And so it basically kills, you know, power to this dial. And so what you need to do to get it working again is, you know, the machine can be running and everything, but basically you need to turn it all the way back to turtle. That'll re-synchronize this knob, if you will. And then at that point, you can either give it foot throttle or you can turn the hand throttle and it will respond. So that's something, like I said, sometimes we get some questions on just because it's not, you know, necessarily something that people have experienced before. Okay, now on your joysticks, we'll go over some of the controls on here. Um, on your left hand joystick, you know, a lot of these are gonna, a lot of the buttons on the joysticks are going to be for adding different attachments and controlling the attachments that you have on there. There will be a few that will be live, uh, no matter what you have on, whether it's a bucket, pallet forks, whatever. Number one is gonna be this bottom round one on the left hand stick. This is gonna be your horn. So that's where your horn's at. Now, on the bottom side of this joystick, I'll flip it up so you can see here, there are two buttons on the bottom. And so the one that's, you know, when you have the armrest down, it's further forward, further towards the windshield. That's this one. That's gonna be your constant flow hydraulics. So let's say you had a broom or a snow blower on there or a post hole digger, something that takes constant flow of fluid to run it. You know, you will hit this and that'll turn on constant flow to that machine. So, and you'll hear it when you hit it. It makes a different noise in the back because it turns on that hydraulic pump and keeps it running continuously. This rear one is going to be your two speed and your creep. So I'll turn on the machine here so that you guys can see what I'm talking about with that. All right, so up here on the dash, as you can see, and real quick while we're here, you know, you can see that you've got T mode one. And if you hit up, it'll go T mode two, T mode three. Basically what this is doing is T mode is gonna be tracks or tires and your mode one, two, and three is going to adjust uh, sensitivity of your joysticks. So, you know, on T-Mode, like I said, tires or tracks. On one, your joystick is gonna be the least responsive, the least jumpy. It's always a good mode to start out on, especially if you're not used to running a lot of skid steers or heavy machinery. Um, you know, start out at one and then, you know, work your way up and maybe you leave it at one forever. You know, that's okay too, just whatever you're comfortable with. But three, the, the controls will definitely be more sensitive and, and the machine will feel more jumpy if you're not used to running them. Um, and then if you hit I, then you'll see that you get L mode as well. L is gonna be your loader. So once again, you've got one, two, and three, one being least responsive, three being most responsive. Um, it's not drastically different, but there's definitely a difference there. So just so you're aware of that. But uh, going back to this joystick over here, and the buttons underneath, I'm gonna hit the rear one, which is gonna be for your two speed or creep. So if I hit it once, you'll see that that rabbit's gonna come on. And so now I'm in high gear. If I hit it again, that uh, light goes out. We're basically in turtle at this point or low gear. Um, you know, anytime you're pushing something heavy or doing stuff like that, you're definitely gonna have more torque in turtle than you will in rabbit. If, you, if you're running across a distance on a lot or you know at your ranch or something like that then obviously rabbit's good because you can transport the machine faster. If you double tap that same button underneath so single tap will take you to rabbit tap it again you'll go to turtle. If you double tap that button it's going to turn on I'm sorry you have to have the parking brake off for this feature. So parking brake off you double tap that rear button underneath the left joystick it's going to eliminate the snail and this is essentially your creep setting for the machine so you can go really slow now obviously slower than turtle and uh, you'll see up here I'll show you the button that I'm using to adjust this you can adjust your percentage of creep so I think when we first turned that on it was at 50 out of 100 and so you'll see right now you can adjust that percentage of creep I mean you can take that all the way down you know, to one out of a hundred. And at that point, your machine is barely gonna move no matter how many RPMs you're giving it. Um, you know, it's just, that's a really nice feature if you're in a really tight spot and you're worried about running into something, this just gives you the most control of the machine. So 
is just going to move real slow for you. And then, you know, you can adjust it up as well if, you know, you're not in such a tight spot but you still want to use creep. You can take that all the way up and it'll move a little bit faster. Still not as fast as turtle, but obviously faster than when it was on one. And so the, the button that I'm using is going to be this one here. That's going to adjust your percentage of creep, which changes the number there. So that covers your live buttons on your left joystick. This toggle here is going to be uh, hydraulic flow. You know, if you are running like a hammer or something like that, I'm pretty sure that that will liven this. But it just depends on how your attachment is wired. And then additional controls for additional features on different attachments that you can put on here. Now moving over to the right joystick on the top, this bottom one here is going to put your loader into a true float. And so if you push that, you do have to have down pressure on the bucket. I'll turn this off so you guys can hear me a little better. You do have to have down pressure on the bucket. You'll push this and you'll hear and feel the arm go into a float. And so that's handy if you're back dragging material or, or a driveway trying to smooth something out. It'll follow the contour of the road because your arm is in float. Um, on your teleskids, this toggle here is going to control actually booming in and out. So telescoping the boom. You know, you push it forward, your arm will extend, you pull it back, and your arm will suck back in. So that's what those two are going to do. Um, everything else on this side, this one here, these top two, and then you do have one toggle underneath. They're going to be for additional attachments. You know, if you have a snow blower, mulcher, mower, whatever you've got on there, depending on how it's wired and everything, and how many different features it has on there, how many different hydraulic uh, cylinders and stuff it has on there, you know, for different wings or whatever attachments, um, you'll use these buttons to control that. This one's going to be float once again for your loader. This one will boom in, in and out if you have a teleskid. So while I'm in here, um, this customer did have us add a rear view camera, which is a really nice feature. Helps you see behind you. Um, but on your seat, okay, you've, you've basically got two levers here okay there you can kind of see them both so this one down here is going to slide the entire framework of the seat um you know good for moving f closer to the windshield if you want to be closer or pushing back you know further from the windshield if, if you know you need a little more leg room or anything like that your owner's manual is going to be in a pocket um more of an encasement behind the operator seat and so to get to it you know you pull up on this lever down here you pretty much got to be in the cab especially when it's new it's a little bit stiff you know you're going to pull up on that bottom lever and then you'll use your legs to pull the seat forward and that's how you'll get into that encasement behind the seat that has your operator's manual this button here is going to be for your air suspension seat so you can adjust, you know, the suspension as far as air on the operator seat. And then this top bar there, what that is going to do is going to slide the seat only. So if you're, you know, as far as, you know, where that would come in handy, let's say that you have uh, shorter arms. And so as you're sitting in the seat, you know, from the factory, it feels like your, your controls are out in front of you and not in a comfortable location. And so you want to shorten up that distance you know, from your torso to where the actual joystick is so it feels comfortable. Well, you would pull up, once again, on this top one here, um, and then you can slide just the seat and the framework will stay stationary. So that way you can slide forward and that'll, you know, if you had shorter arms or whatever, you know, that's how you feel comfortable in there, then you can shorten up that gap. Or if it's too short, you know, and the seat's not all the way back, you can slide just the seat back. The controls will stay where they are, and you'll have a further distance in there if you have longer arms or if it's just more comfortable for you. So that pretty well covers, uh, you know, your controls and, and everything inside the cab. Uh, oh, lastly, I almost did forget, on the back of the seat, I'll show you here. Oh, we got this one too. There's your windshield wiper and washer control for your front windshield. Uh, these guys here, so on the 
JCBs, because we do have that really nice side entry, these are going to release this front window. So this is going to be your emergency exit. And most uh, skid steers like this cat that's sitting right here that we just traded for, your emergency exit is out the back window, which is not giant. Um, hard to see from here, but it's a pretty small window. So the nice thing about JCB, obviously getting in the side, you know, if you did happen to roll the machine and it's sitting on the side with the door, then your emergency exit is the front. But you definitely don't want to flip those levers unless you have rolled it and you're trying to take the door out. Now, lastly, the other thing I wanted to show you here, pretty much every machine that we order um, is going to have a heated seat and there's going to be a switch. I don't know if I can get it in there or not. Yep, there it is. So there's a switch on the back of the operator seat and that's where you will turn on your heated seat. So if your seat's getting super hot and it's, it's a hot day or whatever, chances are that button got bumped and your heat seater is probably on. So thanks for watching guys.